You don't need an expensive wind tunnel to visualize airflow over your car. All you need is some yarn and tape. In this video, I'll show you how you can use these simple materials to do your own car aerodynamics experiments and even find out if you can reduce air resistance enough to improve your car's fuel economy. All you need to do to get started is cut a bunch of pieces of yarn a few inches long and tape them to your car using painter's tape, which is easy to remove, wherever you'd like to visualize the airflow. Make sure you choose a yarn color that contrasts with your car's paint. When you're driving, streamers that point straight along the body of the car indicate attached flow, or airflow that follows the shape of the car's profile. Streamers that flap all over the place or even point in the opposite direction indicate separated flow that is no longer following the shape of the car, resulting in increased drag or air resistance. You can use these streamers to conduct a variety of experiments on your car's aerodynamics. Here are four things we tried that you can try yourself, but there are a lot more ideas out there on YouTube. Number one doesn't require any extra materials. You can look at the effect of driving with the windows down. Watch what happens to these streamers on the rear side window when I put the front side window down. Number two involves any removable exterior accessories for your car, like a hood ornament, roof rack, or off-road lights. Here, see how the streamers on the hood of the car are straight and indicate attached flow. But watch what happens if I mount the camera rear-facing at the front of the hood so it acts as a hood ornament. Now we can see the disrupted flow over the hood directly behind the camera, whereas the streamers off to the sides aren't really affected. Number three involves physical modifications to the body of your car, like this roof extension, using foam board or cardboard and tape. Now some people take this to extremes to improve their car's gas mileage, and we'll put some links in the video description, but we recommend starting a little smaller for your first project. A quick safety note, you'll see that I used painter's tape here to attach this to my car because it's easier to remove and won't leave behind a sticky residue like duct tape. However, I live on an empty country road where I could easily test this without any other cars nearby. You don't want to risk any of your modifications flying off and hitting another car, so if you'll be testing near other cars, it's better to use duct tape to attach them to your car. You'll just need to be more careful about cleaning the sticky residue off so you don't damage the paint. Your results will vary depending on the vehicle and what modifications you make, but in my case, I can see a huge change in flow over the rear window with and without the roof extension. Finally, we have vortex generators. These are small, usually wedge-shaped devices that you can put in various locations on the car to help improve attached flow or delay flow separation. You can make these yourself using something like a rubber doorstop, and you can also buy a variety of aftermarket vortex generators online. The aerodynamics of vortex generators can be a little tricky and counterintuitive, and I'll put a link in the description, but I'm not going to go over it in this video. I did not really see a difference in flow over my front window when I tried using one of these near my side view mirror, but again, your results will vary depending on the vehicle and where you put the vortex generators. In case you wonder how I'm getting all of this footage, as you saw earlier, I have a magnetic exterior GoPro mount I can use to film the outside of the car, and I also set up a tripod inside the car with some cinder blocks to hold it down so it doesn't fall over when I'm driving. However, it's probably easier just to have a second person film from inside the car. You can also drive past a tripod or a person filming on the side of the road, but make sure it's safe to do so. We've now given you four different experiments you can try yourself, and again, if you search around on YouTube, you'll find plenty of other modifications you can make. We're curious to hear how it goes, so if you try one of these out yourself, let us know in the comments. If you're doing a science fair project and would like to see how to analyze the data along with step-by-step -step written instructions, check out the link to our website in the video description. You can also find over 1,500 other projects in all areas of science and engineering on our website, www.sciencebuddies.org.